Hey, Blues fans, Big Harp George here. Today, I'm going to be talking about four principles that guide me when I'm trying to write an instrumental song. And I'm going to be referring here and there to a song that we released last fall on our album, Big Harp George Does Christmas. The song is called Snow Shuffle. Is it a work of great compositional genius? No, but it was quite successful, got quite a, quite a lot of airplay, and more importantly, kind of illustrates some of the principles that I'm going to be sharing with you. So what are these four principles first? Uh, number one, I want to be clear on what I'm trying to say with the song. Next, I want to pick a groove, a tempo, and a song key that serves that purpose. Third, I want to think about the balance between repetition on the one hand and variation on the other. And fourth and finally, I want to think about the context in, uh, in which the song will be presented. Okay, so let me go back at the to the top, uh, being clear on s what I want to say with the song. Obviously, a song with lyrics speaks in the lyrics themselves, uh, but you want to be saying something with a, with an instrumental song as well. It may not be as explicit, as linear, as definite as a song with lyrics. But still, there's, uh, it may be metaphorical, it may be more around a mood or a feeling or whatever, but you know, you want to have a clear objective. I want to have a clear objective when I'm writing a song. And one little trick that could be helpful is that once you get started, you start off with a musical idea. That's usually how it happens with me. I'm noodling around on my chromatic harmonica and I, and I play something, oh, that's cool. All right, what can I do with this? Fairly early on, it can be helpful to start thinking about a song title, right? Um, and uh, we, you know, I chose the tune Snow Shuffle or the title Snow Shuffle, kind of a play on words, right? And uh, kind of playful, funny. Um, and the song that I wanted to write was, was going to be that. I wanted it to be a, a blues song on the one hand, but I also wanted it to be sort of festive and happy. Um, and so uh, it, it started with that title. And, you know, choosing a title like that, you usually don't start with the title itself. You start with the musical idea. And then you start thinking, okay, what is it that I'm really trying to do? You choose that. And then you start working toward that, uh, toward achieving that objective. Um, next, you're going to be choosing a groove, tempo, and key that serve that purpose. Now, um, you know, uh, first of all, groove is an ambiguous term. It's used in a lot of different ways by blue, by musicians. Um, I'm going to be using it in the sense in which I generally hear it being used by my, my musician friends, which is a sort of a combination of rhythm on the one hand uh, and uh, chord progression on the other. So, you know, different kinds of grooves that are used a lot in, in the blues genre are you know, 12 bar blues shuffles, and then there are many variations of shuffles. Uh, a rumba or Latin beat is another, um, and a swing tune is another that usually implies a certain chord progression and a, and a certain kind of rhythmic pattern that's different from a shuffle. So those are the uh, examples of a few um, of a few different kinds of grooves. Tempo is just the speed, the kind of the beats per minute that you're um, that you're working with. Obviously, fast is usually when you're when you want a little more excitement. Slow could be romantic, contemplative, whatever. And then there's lots of stuff in between. Obviously, song key. You know, like I'm I'm comfortable. A lot of my songs are in the key of G. I use a C chromatic harmonica, and it's just a comfortable key for me. Um, sometimes you're going to be thinking about uh, other instruments that you may be playing with. There are certain keys that horns are comfortable in that you might want to accommodate if you can. Um, so, you know, all, but again, all chosen with an idea toward pushing that objective forward, that sort of that idea, that feeling that you're trying to, trying to get. Now, when it comes to repetition and variation, right? Why repetition? It's because listeners' ears are geared toward familiarity. There's a reason, for example, that oldies are so popular. Um, it's because they feel good, they feel familiar, people know what to expect, and it just feels comforting in some way. Um, and you want to have that in a song, including in an instrumental song. And one of the ways to achieve it 
It's a very, very common uh, structure in jazz, for example. Just about any jazz tune that you listen to from the 50s and 60s will, will use this, is to use what's called a head. A head is simply a melody that's played over uh, a verse, the entire course of a verse. You play it at the beginning of the song once, you probably repeat it another time to kind of cement it in people's ears and memories. Um, you might vary it just a little bit, but you keep it, you know, pretty close. And then you do other things in the middle. At the end of the song, you come back to the head and it provides a form of resolution and people, oh, you know, we're home now. That's kind of the feeling that it gives. So, um, uh, heads, by the way, uh, there are all kinds of heads. You want them to be cool, you know, but a lot of them are very, a lot of the most successful heads are real simple. It's because you want them to be memorable and the ear can only take in so much. You know, listen, for example, to Milt Jackson's tune, Bag's Groove. It's one line, one uh, uh, descending melodic line played three times in a row. That's all there is to it. And it's, but it's cool. It's, 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 it's great. Um, so, you know, think, try to, try to come up with a good head, um, that you can repeat and that's, that's simple. And that's for the purpose of achieving that familiarity quickly. Now, people do get bored, right? So if you, all you did in Bag's Groove, if Milt Jackson just played the same thing through the whole song, you'd give up after two, three, uh, uh, verses or four verses. So you have to have something else going on in the song too. There are a zillion ways to create variation. You might, for example, vary the musical voices that are being heard, right? You start with the head, you play it a second time, um, and then you, you play solos, which in some way relate to the head, take off or inspired by, but do other things, right? And for example, in Snow Shuffle, we started with a piano solo, two verses, I did two verses, and then we had trombone for two verses. So we varied it by varying the musical voice. There are infinite ways to, um, to, uh, to, to, to vary a song. Another way, which we also used in Snow Shuffle, is to use what's called, a, we used, a, a bridge. A bridge is simply a deviation from the normal, from the regular verses chord progression. An eight bar bridge is what we use, that's quite common. Um, and a bridge is supposed to take you from one place to another. That's what bridges do in real life. That's what they do in songs. Oftentimes, it's from the verse to a chorus. Um, in this case, in our song, Snow Shuffle, it was uh, verse, bridge, solos. Okay, so the bridge took us from the, the verse to the solos, or from the head, I should say, uh, to the solos. And then it... Uh, took us back. We played the, at the end of the solos, we played the bridge another time, took us back to the head, okay? Um, another, another way we dressed up Snow Shuffle was to have an intro and an outro. We had uh, four bars at each end of the song, right? Quite simple. Um, just, just gave it a little more uh, sophistication, a little more variety, okay? So, um, other ways to, uh, you know, to, to, introduce, to introduce variety, we didn't use them in Snow Shuffle, but modulation, meaning you, you change the key of the song during the song, uh, you might change it more than once. Um, you can shift grooves, you know, a song that does that that's very well known, All My Love by Otis Rush. It's not an instrumental, but it goes back and forth between a, between a rumba groove and a um, uh, and a shuffle groove. No reason you can't do that kind of thing in a in an instrumental. Um, and uh, you can have tempo shifts where you go from, you know, you go into double time. In other words, speed it up. You're going double the time that you were going before, which can create real excitement, um, can be really, really fun. Last, context. Now, um, what I mean by context is how, in what sort of circumstances, what else is going to be going around uh, around the song when you present it. In my case, uh, you know, so we were writing, I was writing the songs for a Christmas album. I knew that this song would be heard with other, with the other songs on the album. And I figured that we would be probably doing sets during the year, during the, during the holiday season in which we'd be playing all those songs again. So one thing I wanted to do was make sure to differentiate 
this song from the other songs on the album. And we did have another song that was kind of similarly structured. It was a 12 bar blues. Um, it had a head. Uh, it, it, was, it was a vocal song with Tia Carroll, my brilliant friend, singing. Um, but I wanted to kind of make sure that Snow Shuffle wa was, you know, was different. Um, and that's one of the reasons that we added the, um, the, the intro and outro and the bridges in, uh, in Snow Shuffle. So there you have it. I want to have a clear thing, clear something to say. I want to um, settle on a groove, a key, and a tempo that serves that message. Uh, I want to think about repetition and variation. And finally, I want to think about the context. I hope that's helpful to you.